who comes in with 40 tumors, headaches, clotting, diarrhea, can't remember stuff, paranoid. You ask for records and you don't get the records from the VA. So what's happening now, this is in Iraq, in Afghanistan. I really don't want to get political, but the same, they're using this depleted uranium, which is actually 70% of the uranium that comes off a reactor. So it's 70% uranium. Not, it's only 30% depleted. They use them because it's seven times the density of lead. They use it as a hardener for these shells that they use to bomb up, to bomb the, the tanks and buildings. So this, uh, recently, one of the fellows came in who, who was a rack um, uh, warrior, I call him, and he said to me, that he, he's been to Iraq and he has Gulf War syndrome. I said, yeah, he had a lot of the features of it. I asked him, were you exposed to depleted uranium? He says, how did you know? And, he, and I said, tell me about it. He said, well, they told me to go in this burned out vehicle tank, and, but not to stay there very long, to see the, he says, why shouldn't I stay there very long? And they looked at him and said, because it's full of uranium. So this is the problem. It's not a mainstream media topic. So people should know that, that these, um, and when they go to the, when, the, when the congressman and the press go to Walter Reed Hospital, as you're seeing there, they're only they're told to go to the amputee wards. Nobody talks about cancer wards. So what happens is, and furthermore, they are not even eligible for traumatic service member group life insurance benefits. So, so nobody knows that this is a serious problem. And this is going on in Afghanistan, went on in Bosnia, went on in Iraq. Iraq now has 700% increase in cancer rates. Okay? You do not hear this on your your mainstream media uh, outlets. Okay, so this is a very significant problem. And with Garth Nicholson and myself and a patient, we did a BBC interview with Gulf War Part One. Now that was only shown in uh, in uh, England and wherever BBC is shown. And I have to put that on my website, but I have to find the old VHS and or I have to get Garth Nicholson to send me one, a copy if he has one. So he's just in Huntington Beach, and he's kind of like, like a discoverer of Gulf War syndrome. There's much to talk about that, but I'm not going to lin linger on that much. Okay, this is a little more about mitochondrial uh, damage caused by pollution. And so you can imagine that all these people are getting ex excess clotting, but the mainstream doctor doesn't check for for excess clotting. Let me give you a couple of cases of how bad this is. Doctor comes to me, he's got chest pain. And so I said, oh, angina? And he says, oh, no. He's an ER doc. He says, uh, arthritis. I says, well, how do you know it's arthritis? He says, well, I've had all the, the, the medical tests. I've had EKG and stress tests and echocardiogram, and, and I don't have any uh, heart problems. I said, well, let's look at your blood. We look at his blood, you find a clot, we give him some fish oil, 10 minutes later, his pain's gone and his clots are gone. Okay, this is how valuable dark field microscopy is. Also, recently, last fall, my secretary, my bookkeeper is on the other side of the office, he's not necessarily into all the nutrition, so she comes in Monday morning and tells me that she was in the hospital for, um, let's see, 20 hours with chest pain and had all the tests, blood tests included, and they, the doctor, a cardiologist looked at her and said, your heart is not your problem. So the upshot was, we look at her blood, she's got clots, we give her fish oil, 10 minutes later the clots and the pain are gone. So again, cardiologists told her this, so they're not looking at the blood, all right? And you can imagine how important that is just from those cases. So people going around with it, with angina, how many of those people develop heart attacks, I don't know. But, but it's obviously not good.
because clots cause heart attacks and strokes. So um, we see mercury, okay? We know there's studies on mercury causing carotid arteriosclerosis as well as coronary arteriosclerosis. It must be causing clotting. So again, test for mercury, have it tested at cheap, and get it out of your, and don't eat tuna swordfish, shark, or halibut. I know, I used to, 20 years ago, I had a friend take a bite of swordfish, and I got him on fish. He didn't like fish. But now I can't do that anymore because of the fact that our big fish are so polluted because of the fact of China, India, and us burning coal, and big fish eat the little fish and, and get more uh, mercury. So the, the uh, health care debate is very interesting. Obama talks to the drug companies, and they're going to reduce the drug costs 80 to 100 billion. Again, I'm not trying to get political, but I'm, I'm trying to protect nutrition. They don't have any discussion with nutrition companies. They don't call them. There is no debate. It is a non-conversation. Okay? So this is kind of a sad situation because the elephant in the room is nutrition. And, and as all of you know, nutrition, preventative nutrition and, and taking nutrition is a lot cheaper than drugs. You know, very expensive. The average drug's $100. A bottle. Okay, so that's self-care and preventive medicine. And this is really funny because Mayo was praised by our president way before, last December before the health bill passed, as being fantastic example of the socialized medicine. But they were, they told, at Phoenix, uh, the Phoenix Hospital, they told Medicare patient, they quit taking Medicare patients, and furthermore, it cost them over a million dollars. They were a million dollars in arrears. So there, you should know this uh, information. So the point is, I can only see it getting worse. And this is, this is very important because of the cell phone use. Again, people get headaches, headaches. In my book, there's a couple of studies there. Headaches are caused by clots. So. As you can see in the top, that's an adult, a little bit of penetration. And a 10-year-old child, more penetration. And the, the little 5-year-old kid, huge amount of penetration of EMF. So please protect our children and have them use the speakerphone, even though you're going to have to listen to a lousy conversation. <laughs> so this is a very big thing nowadays because so many people, so many kids especially, right, we, we were, I was coming here, and this little kid's walking across, in, in a crosswalk, you know, talking on the phone. So um, laughter, of course, is, is the best medicine. This is our book. And we have one patient, Cheryl Ritzy, if, if we have a couple of minutes. I could go on about a lot of the patients. If you want to come up, Cheryl, and talk... Some patients like to talk, some don't. So here she comes. Well, I'm really proud of Cheryl because she's been to about, I'd say about, she, I think she told me about 30 of us. And she's not afraid of this mic here, so. She's been to me, she's been to Dr. Forrest's site. Why don't you say a few words? Okay, this is totally impromptu. I wasn't prepared for this. Um, my story is I had breast cancer, had a double mastectomy, January 2009. Dr. Privatera is right. I have seen almost 30 doctors. I did not go for the chemotherapy or the radiation because I felt it was going to kill me. I had the MUGA scan, and it showed that I had a heart fraction rate of only 51 which meant it would have killed me. <laughs> so I was thankful that I listened to my body. Um, I have to tell you, the mammogram and the ultrasound also missed my cancer. I went to the Hill Breast Center in Pasadena, and I said, I have cancer. The doctor looked at me and said, you don't have cancer. I'm like, I have cancer. 
Mammograms clear, ultrasounds clear. And I said, but I have cancer. I feel something weird in my body. And he's like, but I'm telling you, kid, you don't have cancer. No, <laughs> but I know my body. So after we haggled a little while, he finally agreed to do a biopsy, which turned out I had cancer. So I immediately said I wanted a double mastectomy. And he's like, no, 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 no. It's probably really small. Just get a lumpectomy. Well, I said, no. I have an eight-year-old daughter. I need a double mastectomy. So I had the MRI. They said, oh, it's only one centimeter. You can have a lumpectomy. I said, no, I want a double mastectomy. Long story short, they said it wasn't in my lymph nodes. MRI showed it was clear. Well, they cut me open. It was six centimeters. The MRI missed the cancer. And it was in three lymph nodes. They took 23, which I wasn't happy about, but I was under, so I couldn't prevent it. And so here I am, Dr. Prevatera saved my life. I went to him. I was so sick all the time, I didn't know why. Had mercury in my mouth. Dr. Prevatera looked at me and said, I know what caused your cancer. I said, what? He said, the mercury in your mouth. And I went, what? So at first I was like, hmm, do I believe that? You know, I was caught up in mainstream medicine, but I knew that I had to try something. Got the mercury um, out from Dr. Wong in Glendora in two days, because he heard my story. All of my congestion, fatigue, cleared up. It's just been completely amazing. So it's been 18 months. I do high dose vitamin C IV with Dr. Prevatera. I take all the supplements. And I've changed my diet drastically, which has been very, very difficult. And um, I'm just thankful that I'm here. I take high dose IV vitamin C, 100,000 milligrams weekly. And it has, I feel better today at age 44 than I did in my early 30s. I was for so long with chronic fatigue and sinus problems and debilitating headaches. I had no idea it was the amalgam in my mouth. I mean, that's all they used back when I was younger. So it really has been an incredible journey. I have met so many people and I just feel thankful that the Cancer Control Society, Dr. Prevatera, Dr. Forsythe, there's people out there. So but when are you gonna write a book? <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody says. You know, here's my advice. Get your records. If you're suffering from something, you gotta live your truth, believe in yourself. Get a copy of all of your records and do what you believe in because I was scared when they kept telling me, do you wanna live for your daughter? Then do the chemo. I was like, ah, oh. you know, I didn't know which way to turn, but I just had faith in myself and in God and said, I, I got to go down this right path because after all, I found my cancer. None of the tests did. So that made me continue to press forward. So I just say, get a copy of your records, take ownership. Don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do. You know how they say you have to be your own advocate? It is completely true. And you know what? If you don't like what one doctor say, go find another one because it has to be a partnership. And at the end of the day, the doctors, they can only do so much. I mean, they're people just like us. So you have to really be your own advocate and live your truth, but you have to believe that it's gonna work and you can be healed. And my little saying to me every day to keep me going is all of our lives are temporary. And so I'm thankful for this moment because you never know what's gonna happen. So you can't be caught up in the negativity. And again, I just am thankful for Dr. P because he, he has so much information. So if you haven't seen him, come see him. <laughs> yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Great. Thank you, Cheryl. Brave lady who uh, had to make all her own decisions, and you see the results. Um, she was just wandering around, and I thought, you know, she talks so well. I'm going to have her come up. Okay, I'm done. Any questions will be here because there's a break. Dr. Pervatera, thank you very much for being here again. And